you're not focused on one of those platforms and really learning it really well and distributing a consistent message through that, you'll never build an audience. If you're looking to build an audience, let's say on these platforms, is there anything you're noticing now that you have to do or you shouldn't be doing or just any advice into maybe you have a framework or something into building an audience? Yeah. yeah. Funny enough. Yes, we do. Have, we have a, a framework. I'll go a little bit into it. You mentioned the two pods, if you will, a creator economy, which are individuals, small companies, and then you have the Nikes of the world, which are content marketing. So that's the Red Bull media houses of the world, right. the Procter and Gambles mm -hmm. that have started into this. So what's funny about it is that the models are the same. I've been blessed to go into multiple billion dollar companies and do content audits. And I'll be the content guy, right? I'm the content guy. I come in and I'll look at all they're doing. We do a lot of interviews and then they're, you know, get back to the table with the marketing folks. And they're like, okay, what stuff should we do? Should we launch something? Should we do a podcast? And my whole list is, okay, here's the seven things you have to stop doing. <laughs> <laughs> so basically when you go into these companies, what you find, and you'll, if you look at content marketing Institute research, the average mid-sized enterprise companies does creates and distributes their content in 13 to 16 different ways. So they're on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, and they're doing webinars and events and research and all the stuff. They're doing all the things. Well, what happens is they become mediocre mm -hmm. at best at all those things, and they're not master of any one thing. If so basically, they do a lot of campaigns and a lot of content stuff, and a lot of creators do that as well. So that's my advice is you have to start killing some things. If you're young, if you're just starting this thing, you have to resist wanting to do all those things. Because they'll say, oh, okay, I'm going to do Instagram, I'm going to do TikTok, and I'm going to do YouTube, and I'm doing all these things at the same time. I'm like, no, you're not. No, you pick one. <laughs> and you might, and you could test it first. Absolutely. You might not know which one's the right one. Mm -hmm. So you can absolutely test. It might take you six to nine months, but figure out where that home base is going to be. And then you put more energy into that than anything else. Mm -hmm. And what we see working really well is one home platform and email. So it's mm -hmm. YouTube and email, TikTok and email, Instagram and email, podcast and email is sort of the thing that works best. And then once you build that minimum viable audience and whatever that is, I mean, so you might ask, oh, what's a minimum viable audience? It's that number of audience subscribers that you can get to start to monetize. And in my case, in our case at the Tilt, it was 10,000 email subscribers. We felt that was a strong number. It, for somebody that's a YouTuber, it might be 50,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. Whatever that number is that you think then before you go out and really monetize, you put that in there. And then once you get to that level, then you can ultimately diversify into different things. I'll give you an example. So we started as just a blog for Content Marketing Institute. We did a blog and our research project for three years at CMI. Then we added our email, which we would have done it sooner. We added our email news. So we have a blog and email with a side research project. We're doing that four years. That's all we're doing. Then we added a podcast. Then we added an in-person event, Content Marketing World. Then we added a magazine, Chief Content Officer. Then you add these things every nine to 12 months. And you do that because the research will tell you. And if you go in and you talk to these big companies, that's what we find is you're like, call like an octopus of, of content love, if you will. So the more content you have that they're subscribed to, you can wrap them up and you love them and they love you. They trust you. And then they end up buying anything from you. And we found in most cases, that the magic number is three. If they're subscribed to three things that you do, they're like an audience member for life. They're part of your community. They'll buy anything. So ultimately, that's why you diversify, but you can't diversify right away. Mm. So if you look at Red Bull Media House, how did Red Bull Media House, they do all the things, right? Sure, they do now, but they started as just a print magazine. New York Times, what they do all the things. They started at just a newspaper. Huffington Post, they do like 400, 500 different blogs, right? Yes, but they started to one blog to one audience. So then we diversify out. So that would be my recommendation is focus on what is that core platform? build that out and then you can diversify. Focus on your niche, right? Like yeah. find your niche and just give as much value as you possibly can to that niche in one form, right? Or another and really nail that. And once you nail that, then you can start to, you know, move on to other areas.